So, um, got you good? We're good. Okay, let's start. Let's walk over there. No, you know it's busy over there. We'll just start with the battery. So, um, this is our uh, part of the car, basically, or at least I like to think of it that way, since uh, I've been involved with it since day one. Uh, this is a 60 kilowatt hour battery for the Pro TV. Uh, it has 288 lithium-ion cells that were specifically designed precisely for this application, how we uh, balanced uh, the need for range, 60 kilowatt hours, 238 miles, and the need for power. We had six and a half seconds, zero to 60, about 150 kilowatts. Uh, that's actually 160 kilowatts out of the battery. Uh, so we, we believe we've hit a real sweet spot. Uh, 238 cells, so they're 96 in series, uh, free in parallel, uh, gives a plus voltage, now only about 360 volts. Uh, which, by the way, is identical actually as a the Volt, for instance, uh, high voltage bus, uh, but a completely unique and different battery. As you can see from its shape, it's a flat battery structure. It uh, mounts under the vehicle, under the floor. Uh, it's completely flat. The front, this is the front of the vehicle. Uh, this is under the back seat. So it delivers a completely flat load floor inside the vehicle. Very spacious back seat for a B-class car. Uh, we work very hard on to keep this profile. Uh, flat. Um, you can see through the window, this is our module structure. We put two cells in each of these cassettes. That aluminum frame is used for conducting heat actually in and out of the cell. And on the bottom of the pack is a cold plate. It's actually used for heating and cooling. Yeah, we can see it back here. Base. Okay, yeah, I see it. It's liquid base. You can almost uh, kind of, no, you can't really see it at all. It is actually a single. 18 millimeter thick plate was underneath the entire pack. And that, does that protect the battery pack as well? Uh, no. Uh, the steel structure protects okay. the battery. Uh, heating and cooling ports are here. So we have an external heater and an external uh, chiller. And those are liquid cooled? Or it's liquid cooled, 50 50 glycol, very traditional. Is that glycol? Or glycol or? water. Okay. It has its own loop, sure. and we'll show you that under hood. But um, we uh, condition the, the liquid. And uh, spent a tremendous amount of time balancing that flow because not only do you want to heat and cool the battery, you want every cell within about two degrees C of each other. Uh, that that maximizes power and life. And can keep those close. Um, and then we put a second one, uh, a small one, to service the second row. This is actually two rows. And there's a small cooling plate that's actually fed off the uh, main cooling plate. But uh, very few hoses, very few hose connections. A very uh, we're looking for always high uh, high reliability. Okay. Hose connections are inherently uh, underlying. Uh, control electronics you can see here. Uh, that system is actually common with the Gen 2 Volt. Um, well proven, high reliability. Also balances the cells. You always electrically need to always maintain common uh, open cell voltages across the pack. Um, and that's how we do that. Um, it communicates with controls on the vehicle and. And Pat can give you all the way down if you have Okay, and what kind of temperature range does this go? So um, we uh, we can go as low as minus 30 and as high as any real temperature on Earth. Okay. Um, we do condition in both those extreme cases. Okay. So we'll heat the battery in cold conditions to improve uh, power and improve uh, total energy. Capacity. What happens below 30? Pardon? What happens below 30? Uh, below 30, the, uh, below real, all lithium-ion batteries freeze below 30, okay. so they just don't produce power. They don't okay. hurt themselves, okay. but they don't produce power. Okay. So and there's actually no lithium-ion battery today that works below minus 30. And should we go look Yeah, let's look at the body structure real quick. So um, I won't go through the details, but the point of all the color coding here is our use of high-strength steels of different types. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have six different grades of high-strength steel used throughout. Um, the key to that is you have to make a, a seamless space in the underbody for that battery to fit. So this cavity is shown here. This, this is the battery. I'm not sure you should see, but this is where the battery lies. And uh, because it's a continuous uh, structure, we've integrated the battery body structure. So these black bars are actually the tray of the battery. Okay. And they're just bolted in right. to show it. But that the battery structure is an integral part of the body structure. They work with these other cross car, we refer to those as two or three bars generically. And together, uh, this carries off crash loads cross car without disturbing the, the battery space, basically. Um, the, the, the high strength steels are necessary to be able to take and tailor uh, the crush performance and the static stiffness performance of the vehicle. 
uh, for body bending. You always want that stiff feel of the car. Mm -hmm. Never like a car that feels like it's flexible. Um, we also protect the battery. So inside intrusion, uh, we do not want that to intrude in the battery. And this structure not only uh, protects the occupants, but it protects the, uh, the battery itself. So okay, we're very proud of that. And then that bump that in the battery is right. where the, ba the back seats right are. Right up to here. Okay. And this hole is where the orange manual service disconnect that you see. Okay. That is not used by the customer, but in a service environment, uh -huh. you remove that and that opens the pack circuit in the middle. Okay. And it guarantees that when you're servicing the vehicle, there's no, there cannot be any live voltage uh, once that MSD is removed. Okay. And I see there's a spare tire spot? Is, yeah, I think, we use, I think we use a compact spare. I, I, I'm actually not sure. I'll have to okay. find out for sure. For okay. Um, I think it's actually an inflated kit, but I'm not positive on that. Yeah, they've kind of been moving all the EVs to that. Pretty much, yeah. Um, the rest of the body structure is custom vehicle. Um, again, it's a, it's a B-class car with C-class size interior. Um, and being able to integrate and get the battery out of the way. Where, did, where does the, the structure come from? Is that from like the cruise or from the Spark Well, it, it, it's... It all originally came from the Sonic, but, but um, it's, it's heavily highly modified. modified, very yeah. highly modified. Okay. Right. Uh, it is built at the Orient Assembly Plant, which does build Sonics. Okay. So uh, there's some synergies in there. Um, but this is an all new vehicle and an all new uh, product. Um, I can show you drive unit if you'd like. Sure. I can show you other parts. Let's go. Um, drive unit is actually relatively simple. Uh, the BEV is you know, a single motor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 150 kilowatt permanent magnet uh, motor uh, designed by General Motors. We design all of our own motors. Mm -hmm. uh, we use uh, Barwon technology. Um, we've been designing motors for 25 years now, I believe. Electric Traction motors, motors right? EV1 originally. Right. Um, so. Uh, this is something we're very proud of, but the drive unit itself um, is produced uh, in Korea by a, a third party, okay. um, but it is our design. It is liquid cooled also, uh, glycol in and out here, but then this heat exchanger exchanges with internal oil, uh, which is pumped by this pump, and uh, actually we cool the motor and all the gearing with the same oil. Okay. It's really, relatively simplistic. And you need to change the oil every No, decade? it's uh, for life. Okay. You, you don't touch it. Um, and uh, our motor design is designed specifically to be cooled by oil. Many uh, uh, motors have to be cooled with a water jacket because they're not able to, to tolerate being oiled. Uh, this is a simpler design, much more reliable, and uh, very efficient from a cooling standpoint. So, uh, you know, this is <laughs> this little device puts out you know, 200 horsepower. So, yeah, it's impressive. you know, we're 350 newton meters of torque. So, it's uh, it's real, very strong, but it's a simple gearbox. Um, Makes it quiet is one of the big, you know, goals. It's not really a gearbox, it's just stepping in. It has gears, seven, it's like 7.05 to 1. There's no, you're right, single speed. So, nothing going on here. There's a diff, gear reduction, motor, cooling, park ball. Right. So, yeah, it's all pretty sure. We can look under the hood if you want. Sure. So, uh, it's all electric vehicles, a little different than a motor compartment, but uh, there are you know, four major components under hood other than the drive unit mm -hmm. that I just showed you, all having to do with uh, power conversion, basically. Um, the, the four silver boxes, so simply stated, have, you know, we have four primary functions. Uh, first, we have to produce uh, 12 volt DC from 360 volt DC, mm -hmm. that's the APM. Uh, it is liquid cooled, and it is basically the alternator on a conventional vehicle. Um, it does charge the t a traditional 12 volt battery, which really is only used to to uh, wake the car up. Basically. And how come you use lead here, lead acid instead of lithium? Um, honestly, because uh, it's primary cost. Um, this is a very lightly used battery in this right. application, and a lithium ion battery would be far overkill. It would be much smaller and lighter than that. Oh, I don't know. It would be. Yeah. Gotta <laughs> keep it affordable too, okay. right? <laughs> right, right, okay. <laughs> we're very proud of it. I'm Rich. Oh, nice to meet you. Um, so, um, APM, auxiliary power module, but uh, acronyms all everywhere. Um, this is the high power distribution module. So this is, this basically takes battery DC as an input and sends it to every load on the car. It also brings in the DC fast charge current 
in the receptacle in. Um, it has just a, set, a series of contactors to control that. It's not a very complex machine. Honestly, it's the simplest part here, um, but it does do distribution. We have a high voltage coolant heater for cabin heating. Uh -huh. We have a high voltage uh, heater for uh, battery heating, right. and we have an electric compressor. Okay. So those are the three devices that are powered. Um, and then we have DC in and out to the inverter, which is just below it. The inverter takes DC and converts into three-phase AC. Right. That's a three-phase um, synchronous motor. And uh, the inverter uh, uh, creates those waveforms and does all the motor control. So all that super smooth driving you get to experience in the car, one pedal driving, bringing the car to a stop, all the complexities of controlling that motor down to those tiny little terms necessary, low noise, is all inside this box. Um, and then it drives uh, the three phase into the uh, drive. Okay, so say my power goes out, I have an inverter. I plug, I, I go right to the, the 12 volt. How much power can I draw from this? Will it keep replenishing the 12 volt battery? Actually, I, no one's ever asked me that before, but yes, it would. So how, uh, how but this, this unit's 1.6 kilowatts, so 1 .6 that, kilowatts. that's the max it can put out. But that's enough to keep your house going for a little while. I guess if you're doing some craft at home, I guess I'm not sanctioning it. 1.6 uh, kilowatts, okay. Yeah, this, this, yeah that's a 1.6 kilowatt that, machine. Okay, so you would just need a, a, an external inverter. Okay. okay. <laughs> I didn't tell you to do that, I'm just, but... I'm uh, just curious about that. It, it would, in fact, do that. All right, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, then below that...